Don't let them in. Don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. Can see you don't feel. Don't let them know. Well, now they know. Welcome to this episode. <laughs> Well, you just heard my mediocre singing skills, and you know what? That's exactly why I did it, because they're mediocre, and they're far from perfect. And that's what this episode is about. This is the ultimate antidote to perfectionism. I promised you that I would make an episode about perfectionism, and here it is. So, to me... There's only one way to fight perfectionism, and that's by doing stuff. So I'm just doing stuff, (laughs) and this is completely random. You know, normally I sit down, I have my notes, not like a script or anything, but I put down a couple of, you know, bullet points. I try to structure the episode a little bit, think about what I can do, so on and so forth. Seriously, this time, it's just me talking. Uh, I don't know where this is going at all, at all, but this in and of itself is like the essence, the essence of perfectionism, antidote-ness. <laughs> yep, I'm also not going to cut this episode at all, so whatever happens, happens. And again, as I did with my first episode, I'm recording this on my phone right now, um, Yep, that's just the way it is. Uh, well, when I think about perfectionism, I actually remembered that when I studied psychology, I wrote a paper about it. Um, and if I remember correctly, there are two types of perfectionism. One of them is adaptive perfectionism, and the other one is maladaptive perfectionism so i think this was too long ago to be honest but i think that adaptive perfectionism has to do with striving for success and um, doing things right so your motivation is rather um, to create something extraordinary whereas with maladaptive perfectionism that is a lot more focused on um, let me think um, it's a lot more focused exactly, it's a lot more focused on avoiding mistakes, so you have the difference between adaptive perfectionism being, you know, focused on um, doing something right and maladaptive perfectionism is, you know, focused on avoiding mistakes and I kind of think that's really interesting. Um, I remember that we, in uni, that was like a group thing. Uh, we were a group of four um, girls, obviously. I mean, I don't know if you know, but um, I think about 90% of students in, I wanted to say perfectionism. <laughs> no, um, 90% of students in psychology are actually female, so... There is a definite trend there. So yeah, we were a group of uh, four girls and um, we chose that as our mini research topic. So we conducted um, a mini research. We prepared a questionnaire and sent it out to people. And then later on we got the results and yeah. Um, I think that was about um, actually creating a questionnaire yourself so and validating it and stuff I think that was it oh if I remember correctly so I think you can tell <laughs> perfectly haha um that I am not at all prepared for this um this is like super spontaneous and I'm rambling on and on and on uh I might have to end this episode right now (laughs) and make it only five minutes long. Although I am actually aiming for 15 to 20 minutes with all of my episodes. So yeah, I guess I'm just going to have to ramble on for another 10 minutes. Oh boy, Uh, what can I talk about? 
um, well, I can talk about the fact that I'm recording this episode before my third episode. So this episode is going to be my fourth one, or well, when you hear this, it is the fourth one. And the third one, I hope you've already heard that. I haven't, obviously, because I haven't recorded it, but I hope it's a good one. And uh, if everything went to plan, then you would have understood why I was inspired to sing a Disney song at the beginning. (laughs) And um, yeah, I love Disney. I just love it so much. Um, I love everything about it. Um, And I guess that's also the perfectionist in me, because I have a feeling that with Disney and Disney World and the Disney universe, things are so perfectly coherent and thought through that it just really gives me such a deep inner satisfaction. And I don't know, I grew up with Disney. I grew up with fairy tales. I grew up with um, watching, I don't know, um, The Little Mermaid and... Which is actually, to be honest, I think it's my favorite Disney movie. It's like just that story of that girl who is kind of crazy and an adventurer and who wants to transform herself so badly that she goes all in and, you know, she turns into a different species, basically. I mean, that's just crazy. That's just insane. So I think she's really extreme when it comes to Disney princesses. I mean, all of them are kind of badass. They're really cool. If you think about, I don't know, like Milan or Pocahontas or... Yeah, I don't know. They're like all so unique. And I really like that Disney kind of captured their individual, I want to say, like character or spirit and um, maybe even their culture. I don't know if you can... Well, yeah. Yeah. I think you can say that. Um, Well, right now, I can tell you a little bit about what I'm doing right now. I'm just sitting here procrastinating, to be honest. So procrastination is obviously also far from perfectionism so that's also a good antidote if you want to do something that's absolutely not perfect just procrastinate (laughs) totally recommend um yeah I'm actually about to write down a script for a pitch video I have to shoot for uni and I actually had the idea for a dating app that is solely based on auditive information so basically ditching all of that crap that you know tinder has kind of conditioned us to like or find normal you know that like swiping through profile after profile and just um kind of yeah just having the feeling that you have a dozen or a hundred options, and you can just go through them. And my idea was actually to just exclude pictures completely and create an app that is only based on somebody's voice. So you only have the opportunity to upload um, voice messages or voice memos where you can talk about yourself or sing a song or, you know, um, recite a poem, whatever you want, literally. And I don't know, I just think that, um, and I think that's the reason I also started a podcast, is that I think our voices have so much information about us. Like, even if we don't, say everything that's on our minds I think our voices just really transport so much more than we can describe and I heard someone say the other day that um kind of the fifth dimension (laughs) is actually speech 
or audio based. And well, it's like you know, if you know a little bit about that stuff, and if you're into how do you call this that woo woo stuff, <laughs> it's a little bit like crazy, but. You know, it's about people talking about raising the vibration of the planet and like higher frequencies and whatnot. Um, I just find that stuff kind of interesting, to be honest. So that's why I kind of keep try to keep a little bit up to date with that. Um, yeah, but I just found it very interesting because I think that we do reach people with our voices. Really, I think that a voice can go really deep and it can hit someone. In the heart, in a good way. Yeah, so that's one thing I'm planning. So shooting that pitch video, which I have to have ready by Sunday. And I am also right now just sitting at my desk and looking at a vision board. <laughs> Because I have um, a couple of pictures I printed out. That kind of inspire me, that I find beautiful, or that kind of encapsulate the essence of where I see my life going in a couple of years. And I just hung those pictures exactly in front of me so that every time I sit down on my computer and、um, I work or procrastinate <laughs> or whatever, record.、Um, Weird、um, podcast episodes on my phone. Whatever I do, I just have those pictures in front of me, and I think one way or another, they have an impact on me. And it's kind of like you're getting used to seeing those things, and that's really profound. You know, when you get used to seeing something and you familiarize. Yourself with it over the course of time. Those things are much easier for you to manifest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Manifestation is also one of those woo woo thingies.、Um, no, but it's actually true. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it manifesting. You can call it actualizing. You can call it just doing and creating stuff. But in the end, all of those things mean the same thing, and that's like you bring stuff, things, people, situations into your life that are going to keep pushing you forward in a good way. So, yeah, I can totally recommend creating a vision board and. I also have my mood board, by the way. I have an online mood board. I still, I'm one of those people who still use Tumblr. <laughs> After all this time, I still use Tumblr. And、um, my Tumblr vision board, well, no, my Tumblr mood board、um, is called, I think, Hypnopompic Reality.、Um, <laughs> and yeah, I just post everything I find aesthetically pleasing. So. From pictures,、um, fashion, quotes,、uh, links to YouTube videos or music, I just post everything on there, and it's so cool because I started it back in two thousand and fourteen when I started studying design, and it's so cool to just look back. And see that I kind of always had my style, and I always kind of knew what I liked, and the type of pictures are all kind of surreal, and I really like that. You know, I like those vibes, and yeah, I've gone from actually planning out my feed meticulously, color coordinating the posts.、Um, Looking for common details that would link one post to the next, you know, I was very into it at some point. This year, I just switched to, you know, just posting, 
when I see something, I just post it. And if that means that I see three cool things in a day, I just post them. If I don't see anything for a week, I don't post anything. And that's it. And I think that's also just a way for me to be less, be, be, less, <laughs> be less of a perfectionist. Um, because I just, I embrace the moment as it is. And I think that's really what all of this is about, you know. Stop planning, stop plotting all the time, stop strategizing and analyzing. All those things have their place, definitely. I'm the last person to say you don't need a plan, you don't need to make a strategy. I'm really, honestly, the last person to say that because that's what I always do. But just a little bit more of relaxation, of open-mindedness, of that frozen song spirit. <laughs> just let it go. Just let those things go for a moment and um, focus on what's right there. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What are you seeing? What are you perceiving? Don't judge anything. Just let those things pass you by. And if you're into meditation, that's exactly what meditation is. There are different kinds, obviously. Um, but the basic idea of meditation is connecting to the present and to yourself. So I think, let me take a look been talking for 17 minutes well I think that's kind of enough <laughs> um, yeah, as I said this episode won't be cut I'm recorded on my phone I'm actually quite surprised that um, there's room on my phone to record this because literally whatsapp crashed on me today because it said I don't have enough um, volume left, whatever, um, yeah, so I guess this is just supposed to be, and I'm going to upload this episode as it is, I really hope you enjoyed this, um, if not, I'm sorry, <laughs> but, um, yeah, remember, the ultimate antidote to I wanted to say antidote to chaos because that's, um, if you're into Jordan Peterson, you know that, I think that's the kind of subtitle of his book, 12, 12 Rules for Life, which I have. I bought it two years ago and haven't read it, <laughs> but it's kind of on my reading list uh, along with like what feels like 10, 20 other books. Yeah, but I'll get to it eventually. I want to get to it before his next book comes out, but I don't know. So no, this was not the antidote to chaos. This was the antidote to perfectionism. You know, I can't quote Nike enough. Just do it. Bye.